This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Right, well, now we've got the discount rate, 12%. We can turn to the project and actually start evaluating it, uh, start discounting. So let's go back and look at the project. It says, towards the end of uh, the first page, the initial cost of the project is expected to be 42 million and is expected to generate the following after tax flows over its four year life. The above figures are based on the tourism industry ex expanding as expected. Well, I know we already saw there's bits coming about it may not grow and all this, but let's make a start. First of all, what are we up to? Workings 10. Let's suppose it does expand as expected. Well, no problem. We've given the cash flows. Uh, first year, 3277.6 times 2, 1634.3 times 3, 36504.7. 504.7. Uh, and fourth year, 35683.6. So I'll get the other possibilities for the moment. We'll um, carry on reading in a second. Uh, but if it does expand as expected, we'll discount at 12%. And incidentally, put your workings. That was workings 9. Because uh, I think it's fairly clear, with so much work that we had to do to get the 12%, the chances of not having made a mistake are tiny. And so, uh, if you had got the 12% wrong, you'd have lost marks where relevant, uh, but you'd still have got full marks for what follows for discounting at whatever rate you'd got. But I've made it clear, it's workings 9, I'm using the rate we got, 12%. Uh, even if you got stuck on calculating um, a cost of capital to use, even if you had to invent one, you know, do it at 10%, but just state you're doing it at 10 for this bit, you'd still get full marks. Anyway, we are going to do it at 12. So the discount factors, uh, 1 year, 0 0.893, 0 0.797, 0 0.712, 0.636. Uh, and so that was the discount factor, sorry. The present values... Two nine two six point nine uh, twelve eight five nine point zero two five nine nine one point three and two two six nine four point seven. So, the total uh, present value sixty four four seven one point nine. The initial cost was forty two thousand. And therefore, the net present value at 22,471.9. So, no problem there if it expands as expected. However, if you carry on reading, the above figures are based on the tourism industry expanding as expected. However, it's estimated there's a 25% probability that it will not grow as expected. And if this happens, the present value of the project's cash flows will be 50% of the original estimates of its four-year life. Well, I don't think any problem here. Not expand as expected.
Well, it says the present values will be 50% of the original estimates. Well, surely we've got the original estimates there. Here are the present values. There's the total of them. If they're 50% of the um, uh, present values, well, if each of those is only 50%, the total will only be 50%. So the present value will be 50% of 6447.1.9 which comes to 32236 again the cost 42000 in which case the net present value will be negative 9764 so we're going to have to put all these together uh, afterwards, but step by step. It expands as expected, the first one. It doesn't expand as expected, the second one. However, there's a bit more here. Now this you need to read very carefully. I think this is the um, largest one to interpret. Workings 12. It's also estimated that if it grows as expected in the first year, there's a 20% probability that it'll slow down in the second and subsequent. And the present value of the project's cash flows would then be 40% of the original estimates in each of those years. So what's going to happen? Let's end it up. If it grows and then slows... Let's read it again. If it grows as expected in the first year, so in the first year, it will be 3277.6. So the present value, as before, 2926.9. But if it slows down in the second and subsequent, then the present value for each of the uh, following three years will only be 40% of the original estimates. So second year, present value instead of being 12859 will be 40% of that. 5143.6 in the third year, it'll only be 40% of what it was before. 10 364.5 and in the fourth year 40% of 2269.4.7 9077.9 and so what would happen then the total present value Twenty seven five one two point nine. The cost again at forty two thousand. And so if this happened, the MPV again will be negative. I think fourteen four eight seven point one. So three things that can happen. Incidentally, the next paragraph mentions Lumi offering some money. But we are doing C part two. It says estimate both with and without the offer from Lumi. So at the moment, I'm ignoring the offer from Lumi. We'll think about that later. So if there's no offer from Lumi, if, that, if what follows is irrelevant, then one of those three things is going to happen. We'll either get plus 22471 or... Minus 9764, minus 14487. What are we going to do? Well, given we're given probabilities here, surely, uh, although we'll be making lots of assumptions, we can mention them after, and they're just for the report, we're going to have to look at the expected value. Something that doesn't happen that often in P4, but something you've dealt with before, certainly. 
in um, paper F5 and paper F9, I think. But the expected value, where we've got three possible outcomes, if we know the probabilities of each, we can multiply up and get the expected value. And what are the possibilities? Um, and here again, it's very, very easy to misread. And it's easy for me here, and it's easy for the examiner, because he wrote it. But it's easy for me here when I'm not sort of panicking over it. In the middle of an exam, I think this is tricky. I wonder how many people actually read it right. If you look back at the information about probabilities, the first, sorry, the first probability we're told below the original cash flows, it's estimated that the 25% probability it will not grow as expected. So we're going to work out the expected NPV. First one it mentions does not grow in which case what MPV did we end up with if it didn't grow as expected 9764 negative the probability of that happening was 25% The alternative, of course, is that it does grow. And that must be 75% of the time. But if it does grow, look at the top of the second page. If it grows as expected in the first year, there's a 20% chance that it'll slow down in the second and subsequent. Presumably, therefore, an 80% chance that it doesn't slow down. So, it, um, it does grow 75%, but it either continues to grow or it slows down. Now, we've done the MPVs. If it, if it starts growing and then slows down, it's that last one, 14487.1. If it starts growing and continues to grow, so it grows right the way through, it's plus 22471.9. But what are the probabilities? Remember, starting to grow will only happen 75% of the time. And of those 75 times out of 100, 20% of them, it will slow down. 80% of those 75 times out of 100, it won't slow down. So something that's very unusual for P4, but be very careful. You see these two together, are going to happen 75% of the time, but 80% of the 75%, it'll continue to grow, 20% of the 75%, it won't. And so the probabilities of it continuing to grow is 80% of those 75%, which is 60% of the time, and the probability of it starting to grow and then slowing down is 20% of those 75%, which is 15%. Now that is very unusual, as I've said, for P4, but it does work uh, in the sense that if we've got all the possibilities, they must add up to 100%. It's got to be one of the three. Uh, add them up, 25, 85, 100%, there we are. Having got that, the expected value shouldn't be a problem. The expected value, you multiply by the probabilities and you add up. And so that's just pure arithmetic. Uh, let's see if I can get it right. 9764 times 0.25 
is 2441. Uh, 22471.9 times 0 0.6, 13483, uh, I'll do it to the nearest uh, unit, uh, 14487.1 times 0 0.15 is 2173, which gives an expected net present value. Of 13483 minus 2441 minus 2173 and expected 8869. Now, then, um, although that's that for that bit of the question, the expected MPV is positive, go ahead, whatever. Um, do appreciate we have more assumptions there to write down uh, in your report. The whole idea of, you know, where do, would we get those probabilities from in the first place? Um, for the numbers, obviously, no choice. But in real life, how on earth would you know the probabilities? Um, in addition, the chances of there being just precisely three alternatives, I think, is remote. There could be any number of alternatives. So I'd be very scared of making decisions on that basis, but that, as I say, is, is your assumptions, reservations in your report. From the arithmetic, there is the expected um, MPV, therefore the additional value of the luxury transport problem uh, without the offer from Lumi. Now, incidentally, um, the examiner did it a slightly different way, perhaps a slightly quicker way, but he had the benefit, obviously, he'd written the question. Uh, that's the way I'd have done it in the exam. I think it's the safest way. Uh, he sort of worked out the, expect, uh, the expected flows and then discounted. He comes to exactly the same answer. I think he was slightly different, but that's just rounding. I'm certainly not worried there and irrelevant for the exam. Uh, personally, I think, well, as I mean, that's the way I would have done it. I think it's the more obvious, I think it's the safest. And also, if something had gone wrong, I am guaranteed to be getting some marks. You know, even that first bit, discounting the flows as they stand, wouldn't get all the marks, obviously. But the, you know, that bit, on, uh, working's 10 on its own, is very, very easy marks. All right. The only thing remaining, though, is there's the expected MPV without the offer from Lumi. We need to consider Lumi. OK. What we've got there is the expected value doing the project, but ignoring the offer from Lumi. So without offer from Lumi. All that remains is to consider the offer from Lumi. So have a look at the next bit on uh, page on the second page of the question. Lumi, a leisure company, has offered 50 million to buy the project from Fugi at the start of the second year. Now the second year starts at the end of the first year. It starts in one year's time. So what's going to happen is we'll wait a year, and the, the first year, 377.6, but at the end of the first year, then we've got the choice. We either take 50 million um, from Fugi, or we carry on and get the remaining flows, whatever they may have been. And so, how are we going to deal with it? Um, first of all, well, let me write down workings. It's workings 14 uh, with offer from Lumi. Uh, first of all, 
uh, everything's going to be in present value terms. Remember, everything we've calculated, we've calculated the present value um, for each year. And then we worked out the present values. Uh, if it didn't expand or if it grew, then slowed and whatever. And so when we come to decide at the end of the first year, beginning of the second, would I rather have 50 million or would I rather continue? We'll have to base the decision on present values. Uh, it'd be silly to do otherwise. So before I go any further, let's work out what the present value will be of this 50 million in uh, one year's time. Um, now remember, don't get confused here, everything else we've done has been in thousands. And so to be consistent, I'll write 50,000 in one year. Well, we're discounting, remember, at 12%. So the one year discount factor of 12% is 0.893. And so the present value of selling to Lumi would be 44,650. So on its own, that's fine. The problem here is sorting out the decision, and it is messy. I think this is the hardest bit of the question. And I think the best way of explaining is something well, I was going to say you should have seen, but it's way back in paper F5. Uh, and it may not have been in the syllabus when you did it, but it was a decision tree. Now, you don't need a tree here. You don't. Uh, but whether you've heard of trees or you haven't, I hope this will sort of explain what's happening. And that what's going to happen... If we do start this project, then in the first year, one of two things will happen. In the first year, first year, either it grows as expected or it doesn't grow. That's what happens. I hope you can read my writing. Now that's the first year. At the end of the first year, first of all, if it hasn't grown, we then have the choice. We've got the choice here of either selling to Lumi In which case we get our 50 million. Or if we decide not to sell to Lumi, uh, remember that if it uh, doesn't grow, well, it doesn't grow at all. You know, however, it's estimated 50% chance it will not grow as expected. It'll be 50% less. So it carries on not growing. And so that's going to be fairly easy. Uh, in that, you see, in the first year, uh, if it doesn't grow at all, um, all the flows are 50%. So it'll be 50% of 2926.9. The present value, which is 1463.5. Uh, we then carry on. If we sell to Lumi, we'll get 44,650. If we don't sell to Lumi, then uh, the next three years, they'll be 50% of what they would have been otherwise. So 50% of 12,859 and so on. So 50% of those three, uh, 30773. So obviously what I'm doing here, again, you don't need this picture. I'm just trying to make sense of it. But if the first year doesn't grow, we get half the first year's present value. If we continue, it will be half the next three years present value. 
or at the end of the first year we could sell to Lumi, present value would be 44,650, or which would we rather do? If the first year doesn't grow, we'd rather sell to Lumi. And therefore, if there's no growth in the first year, we'll sell to Lumi. And what will the net present value be? We'd have had 1463.5 in the first year. Selling to Lumi, present value 44,650. Uh, we've had the cost, of course, 42,000. And so the MPV then would be 41, Three. Sorry. Four one one three point five. What happens if it grows in the first year? If it grows in the first year, uh, as expected, that's the uh, original flows. Then the present value in the first year is two nine two six point nine. But we've then got a choice, surely. Our choice at that stage, we either sell to Lumi, and the present value of that, remember, 44,650, or we decide not to sell. And if we don't sell, what's going to happen? If we don't sell, then uh, look what it says here, uh, the top of the second page. Um, if it grows in the first year, fine. If we don't sell, there's a 20% chance it'll slow down. You see, when we sell to Lumi, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. So if we don't sell to Lumi, either... Uh, it continues to grow or it slows down. So how are we going to decide? You see, if it continues to grow, uh, then those next three years give us a present value of those three added together. 12859 plus 25991 plus 22694.7. So if it continues to grow, we get another 61545. Brilliant. Remember, there's 2926 in the first year, present value. Then extra present value for the next three of 61545. However, if we decide not to sell to Lumi and it turns out it slows down, then those th later three years, instead of getting the full present values, what was it? It'll be 40% of them. So 40% of the total of those three, 61,545 times 40% is 24,618. Now, I hope this tree is making sense. As I say, if you've done F9 recently, you'll have seen trees. If you haven't if you've done F9 recently, you won't have done. doesn't matter. You don't need the picture. But I'm just trying to make sense of it. Uh, in that, it's here we've got our problem. If it grows in the first year, shall I sell to Lumi or shan't I? Let me write it down. If grows in first year, then we've got the choice. Either sell to Lumi, and we get 44,650. Or don't sell to Lumi, carry on with it ourselves. But if we don't sell, uh, 
then one of two things will, uh, is going to happen. We'll either get 61545, or it slows down and we get 24618. Well, it's going to be one or the other. We're going to have to use expected values again. We know the probabilities. If it grows in the first year, it says, top of second page, there's a 20% probability it will slow down. Uh, there's an 80% chance it won't. And so... What's the expected value if we don't sell? Again, the weighted average. I'll do it all on my calculator, but 0 0.8 of 61,545 plus 0 0.2, 20% of 24,618 gives us 54, 159.6160. 160. And so what would you rather do? If it does grow in the first year, would you rather sell to uh, Lumi? Or would you rather not sell to Lumi and get 54? Surely we'd rather sell, uh, rather not sell to Lumi. And what MPV would we end up with? Well, remember, you've also got the first year's MPV. Uh, the first year's present value, rather. The uh, first year, 2926.9. Less the original cost of 42,000. We'd end up uh, with an MPV of... fifteen oh eight six point nine. There's bits of rounding here, but we're not with that. And so, uh, ultimately, one of two things is going to happen here. Either there's no growth in the first year, and we end up, without repeating everything I've said, with 4113.5. Or it does grow in the first year, and we end up with 15086.9. What's the expected value going to be? Well, no growth in the first year, end of the first page. 25% and therefore growth in the first year 75% the expected value if we get the offer from Lumi is 12343. Three. So I will just summarise, and in fact part C is only asking you to summarise what we've done. So part C, what are the benefits from combining? Is it beneficial? That really is summarising them back to the report. Uh, but the result of um, everything we've done in part C is without the offer from Lumi. The gain, the benefit, the um, additional value will be the net present value, which was what? 8869. Now uh, remember these are thousands. with the offer from Lumi. Uh, there is additional value. Uh, in total it's 12343. Three. The additional value is the difference. Uh, I'm not going to write that down. 
but there we are. And obviously in the course of that we've made so many assumptions. We've made assumptions about the probabilities. Uh, I've said that. Uh, I'm using expected in the first place. You know, it could be one or the other. It's not going to end up being an average. Uh, but also, how certain are we, are we of this offer from Lumi? You know, it's all right saying with the offer from Lumi, it's, the whole thing's worth 12343. But have we signed a contract, you know, in a year's time? Uh, is Lumi going to keep to the offer? Are they still going to be prepared to pay us 50 million or not? Um, but again, that's part of your report, your assumptions. So just to recap, the question as a whole is awful. I mean, the examiner himself accepted it was hard. It was very badly done. That's hardly surprising. Uh, and it's for two reasons. Partly this last bit. I do think that last bit, it's a bit too much. I really do. Um, even if you have done paper P5 recently enough and you've seen trees and things and you're happy with... I say you don't actually need the tree. Being have done it recently, it still takes a lot of time to interpret. It's very difficult. Um, I said the first time I did it, I misread it. And I, I would have passed it. I mean, don't panic. There's a lot of uh, relatively easy marks, you know, just proving you can work out a present value and proving that you can work out an expected value. Both of those should be no problem. The problem is putting it all together. That is awful. Um, the other bit that makes it an hard question, of course, is although the rest of it, uh, working out the cost of capital, for instance, every bit of that is fair enough. It's stuff you should have learned anyway and could be asked anywhere in the exam. I said at the very beginning, weighted average cost of capital, uh, gearing and ungearing beaters and so on. Uh, what makes this awful is there is so much to do in the time. The chances of finishing it in the time are remote. But can I finish by just repeating something I said at the beginning? Um, don't expect to finish. Don't expect to get 50 marks. And don't take three hours doing it. You still won't get 50 marks. Yeah? Um, you'll have no time left to do part B uh, of the paper. But if you're sensible, you should be able to get pass marks reasonably quickly and hopefully a fair bit more. Parts A and B and the format of the report is 15 marks. Uh, this last bit, to get that right in the exam, I think would be almost impossible. But just proving you can discount and do an expected, even if you're using the wrong figures, as long as it's clear what you're trying to do, you'll get some marks. Two marks, three marks, you know, they add up. Um, the cost of capital calculations. Again, I know full well you make one tiny arithmetic mistake in one bit of it. Um, and it makes everything else wrong. But provided it's clear what you're trying to do. You know, even if all my figures were wrong there, I've proved I know how to... Um, um, ungear a beta to work out an acid beta. If it's clear what you're doing, then you're going to get most of the marks. And so, you know, part two, 18 marks, there's no way you're going to get 18. But you should, certainly parts one and two between them, you should be able to get uh, more than 10 marks and then you've passed the question uh, without too much difficulty.